So you've been hearing about all the wonders of Ada and Spark for now a day and a half. And it's my duty to now bring everything a bit, everybody a bit down to earth and discuss C and C++ just before lunch. Uh, but th there's actually a story behind that, and there's actually a reason why uh, it's important for us to have uh, a C and C++ tool chain and technology available for you guys, uh, even though uh, we are strong Ada and Spark believers. So let me actually give you some, some insights and rationale for that. Maybe at the beginning of the times, in the 80s, Application were a bit like that, you'd have whatever platform that you would select to run onto, and you would be able to select one language and stick to that language, right? So kind of a monolithic environment, sort of a, a green field development. However, as time goes, uh, application look a bit more like that. And actually, that's even on the um, easier cases. You have some people that even try to uh, interact with other languages such as Java, Python, and others. I'm just talking about C and C++. It's extremely common amongst our customers to have mixed A and C in the same binary. So compiled together, linked together. And it's relatively common as well to have people that also require C++. Now, there may be an array of reasons for that. Some are very good, some are not so good. But for example, you may need to integrate with an existing off-the-shelf component that you need to compile and link. Um, you may be migrating to Ada and Spark, and therefore you need to handle the C legacy source code that you may not be able, or C++ legacy source code that you may not be able to uh, um, rewrite. In some rare cases, you might even want to migrate away from Ada, but you still want to keep your Ada, so you need to interface with uh, C++ for newly written code. I mean, th there's a lot of reasons why this makes sense. And it's important to us to be able to support you guys with a consistent tool chain, with a consistent experience, with a consistent software workshop without requiring you to have to pick components uh, from different places. And once you've tagged that picture into account, um, there is no reason why we wouldn't also help your teammates that are not as fortunate as you, that can't use Ada, and that have to stick to C and C++. So with that same tool chain, we want to be able to support pure Ada development. We want to be able to support mixed Ada, C and C++ development. And we want to also uh, support pure C or pure C++ development, at least on the environment that we support. OK. So we have an asset for that, right? Our technology today is based on GCC. Tomorrow, we may have some LLVM component in the mix, but the idea remains the same. And, and from this point of view, you, you might actually be asking, hey, hang on a minute. Uh, the GNAT compiler is based on GCC, so you know this all integrates into the same intermediate language. These things are supposed to work together. Uh, why do I need the uh, GCC from Ada Core? Why can't I just get another one? Uh, as a matter of fact, it's possible, it's maybe likely that you already have some uh, C and C++ GCC-based environments uh, coming from a different place. Quite often, that would be coming from the Arthur's vendor themselves. So if you take the example of our good friends, WinRiver, uh, they deliver to you guys an operating system, but they want you to be able to use it right away. So they also provide uh, versions of GCC so that you can start working. Typically, those are included at no additional cost. Uh, so you'd get the C and C++ based on GCC coming from some place, and then you would get the ADA uh, version and here comes the time to link everything together. If you're linking A down C, more likely than not, it is going to work out. 
But if you start to put C++ in the mix, you're highly likely to get some weird stuff happening at link time with some obscure message which would say, for example, hey, uh, undefined reference to something and whatever and 200 messages that are completely obnoxious and, and non-understandable. Uh, and that's coming from the fact that you would be using two incompatible GCC versions uh, and creates an array of problems. So we want to prevent that from happening. We want you guys to have a comfortable experience with our tools. Uh, there are things beyond the bare incompatibility issues that I just mentioned that may stir you to uh, a compiler vendor supported tool chain, shall I say. Um, you know, Enacore bread and butter is or starts at the compiler technology. We have tools around it. We have coverage, static analysis, and so on and so forth. But everything revolves around the programming language, around the compiler. So that's our job. And you've seen that on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, when you open Ticket, we are able to fix compiler problems, sometimes in a matter of days, sometimes in a matter of hours. Uh, you get intermediate versions very quickly. You get analysis very quickly. You get an language level. Uh, answers very quickly and so on and so forth. And all of that goodness that you're getting uh, from the ADA toolchain, you might want to get the exact same thing from C and C++. Um, on top of that, because we are compiler and language experts, we tend to push things to the latest. In particular, uh, the version of the language that we support for C and C++ are the latest, uh, so 11 for the C case. And a subset of C++ 17. I mean, C++ 17 is a huge standard, so there are always holes in various implementations, but that's quite a f large version that is already available uh, as part of the current state of the technology. So let's discuss our first capability that are specific to C and C++, and then I'll move on to mixed language kind of things. First of all, in terms of platform support. Uh, if you look at our history, our interest in C and C++ for cross-environment is relatively recent. We have had native support for many, many years. I think C++ was first introduced almost 10 years ago, if not more. Uh, but for the cross-environment, uh, we started with C maybe four years ago. And we support today with RC compiler, embedded Linux, VxWork 6, VxWork 7, and Lynx 178. And by the way, uh, using some Arthos vendors here, uh, what I'm saying here is done with their, um, how can I put this? They're very happy to have us working with them and supporting that platform. That when I'm saying that maybe you would prefer using our compilers rather than theirs, that's not against them. Uh, a good proof of that is that we just announced uh, C++ support for VxWork 7 and Embedded Linux. And in that very press release that uh, was made, I believe, three days ago, we have a quote from Michel Chabrou, which is uh, VxWork 7, or VxWorks, overall product manager at Twin River. So this is something that we're doing in partnerships with uh, those vendors. Um, so for C, we, we support this area of products. What's new? is that as of this year, uh, some of this has been released already, some of this is about to get released. We also support cross C++ environment. Today on embedded Linux, VxWork 6 and VxWork 7. Sometimes that provides to you compilers that you cannot find otherwise. Uh, if I take VxWork 6, for example, which we support uh, for the PowerPC target, Linux host, there's a weird technical limitation on Windows right now, but if you are Linux hosted, it's, it's off the shelf. Um, I believe the compiler that comes by default with the, uh, the OS must be C++ 98 or something like that in terms of versions. Uh, the compiler that we provide for VxWork 6 PowerPC is um, C++ 17. So that opens a new capabilities if this is something that you're looking for. Uh, if you look at VxWork 7, uh, a lot of the available by default C++ compilers are LLVM based. If you do it GCC, we can provide it for you. Okay. So what are the capabilities on those platforms that are made available? A, a very interesting one is the GNAT Pro Assurance capability. That's something also relatively recent in our product map. We try to 
talk about it every year, but uh, this is here again in the context of C++. Essentially, the idea of Gnut Proassurance is to bring the idea of longevity as far as possible for your product. So one day you may select a tool chain, a version, let's say in this case 19.x, which is the uh, stable version that we just released. You may want to stick to that version or that branch of the compiler for the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. Uh, but you may still need some active maintenance on it. Let's say you find a bug that needs to get fixed. You would like to get it fixed, but not necessarily uh, get the fix on the very latest version, like the 25 or Gnat Pro 30 at that time, but you might want to get it on the 19. So that is what Gnat Pro Assurance provides to you. Uh, we are looking at so-called critical bug fixes. We have kind of a restrictive way to define what is critical. And the reason is that we want those branches to be super stable. So we might be annoying to you saying, no, that's not critical. We don't want to take in that into account. But conversely, we will be annoying as well uh, to other people that are on the same branch and also would like to get fixes there. So in order to make that as stable as possible, we are only accepting what we call critical bug fixes, which can be one of three things. It can be a silent code generator error. My compiler generated binary, didn't tell me anything, but the binary is wrong. Uh, it could be a false negative on a verification tool. My tool, Spark, for example, told me that this is OK, but actually it's not. And it can be kind of a fuzzy category where the behavior of the tool chain is impeding your ability to certify. So this is a very rare case, but sometimes there's something that doesn't fit these categories, but uh, still makes uh, certification very difficult. So in those cases, we're going to look at the problem and say, OK, can we fix it with minimum impact? If yes, we put the fix in, we deliver the version to you. That's your decision whether or not you want to actually use that compiler uh, for production. Many of our customers, what they actually do is that they recompile the application with the new compiler. They look at the binary. More likely than not, the binary is the same because you guys were actually not impacted by those bugs. So you know that uh, you're free to go. If you are impacted, you know exactly where the changes occur in the binaries. So that's possibility one. Possibility two, the change is too impactful for a fix, but we can have an extra warning in the compiler. So the error is not silent anymore. And if is even that is difficult, then we would just uh, provide additional information either to explain why the odds of having this problem is so low or how to otherwise detect it. Uh, and on top of those fixes and analysis, we provide extra information on known problems. Uh, we look at uh, what's happening on the GCC community. We're lucky enough to have an open source compiler. That means that beyond our customer base, beyond you guys, there are a lot of people out there that are shaking the technology in all kinds of ways and, and finding potential problems that you might want to know about uh, to decide whether or not uh, you want to react. So we look at those things. We look at problems on other versions. And we document all of that with extra analysis and extra categories for you to be able to follow that. All of that is available for Ada. And it's exactly the same service for C and C++. Um, we package the Gnat Studio environment as well. Uh, I just think that slide uh, an hour ago, it said Gnat Programming Studio, but I got that one early enough. Um, with all the mixed language edition capability that you would expect, we integrate with a navigation engine that's called C-Lang, uh, which you might be aware of. Uh, it used to be the case that some of the C++ capabilities were actually better than the Ada ones uh, because of that in the recent past, although I think that has uh, switched. And we integrate with builds and debug. Th that's an interesting point. So we can debug mixed language applications with the same environments. Uh, when you start to get intricate frames, that, that's quite useful. This is a C-specific capability. But um, all of our product, or C and Ada, I should say, all of our product include the Gnat stack, static stack analyzer. Um, so the idea is that we look at the call graph, and we will, from the compiler output, we'll be able to measure the worst case of stack consumption. 
if you're using things such as recursion or uh, system calls or dynamic frames, uh, you may have to enter some information manually. But beyond that, essentially, we can give you the information even if you are mixing A and C together, as long as everything is compiled through the GNAP Pro compilers. Um, here's a funny one. We made a lot of noise uh, about the fact that ADA supports uh, mixed Indian NES specifications, so you can target a big Indian system but have records that are actually um, little Indian layout or vice versa. It happened that we implemented that in the back end of the compiler. So we're thinking, well, you know, we can make that available to ADA, but we can make that available to C as well. So here you go. Uh, you can, with our technology, specify the Indianness of C structures exactly the same way as you would with ADA. Okay. And when you are, and th that cannot be absolutely critical when you migrate from, let's say, a legacy PowerPC to a little Indian ARM or x86 uh, processor, uh, because Indianness is different, and typically this uh, can cause a lot of headaches. Now, this really is for the pure. C and C++ kind of value, um, it becomes even more interesting when you start considering mixed application. And uh, to, to the point where it's extremely cumbersome to mix it on C++ if you don't have uh, the, um, the common compiler. And here might be the single one reason why you might be interested about it. Let's consider this kind of call stack, right? It was C++, it's calling ADA, it's calling C++, it's all intertwined, I have callbacks, I have, you know, whatnot. Let's say I'm using a UI library in C++, so you can imagine the kind of interface that I have to deal with. I'm using a UI interface. You know what they do all the time, those interfaces? They throw exceptions for various reasons. So C++ calling ADA, calling C++, and then bam. I did something wrong in my ADA, I didn't call things properly, there's a system error, C++ is throwing an exception. What I would like to be able to do, and what I actually can, but only if you have the same compare on both sides of the equation, is to throw this exception, catch it in ADA. Maybe in a when other statement. I, I believe there's a way to be more specific than others, but let's make when others for now. And then maybe, wait a minute, I decide to carry on after I'm doing some stuff and back, raising back this exception to C++, which I want to catch in a C++ uh, exception handler. Well, this kind of things requires um, very compatible ABI specifications and so on and so forth. There's no way for that to work if you don't have the same compilers. And as a matter of fact, we've had quite a few tickets and report of people that get random crashes on their mixed data and C++ application, and often it boils down to this. Uh, I even have one ticket uh, back in the days of a customer that had ADA, C++, and Java intertwined, and that kept crashing. It took us weeks to understand why, up until we were like, oh, wait a minute, what C++ compiler are you using? And that was the reason. Um, there's another thing that you might be interested in, although it's a bit more advanced usage. I mean, this is going to come up very, very often, very easily. Uh, but sometimes the C++ interface that you're interacting with relies on class derivation. Okay. So uh, how do you derive a class in ADA if it's specified in C++? Well, if you are using the same compiler on both ends, and if you bind the uh, C++ class to ADA, then you can derive that class in ADA. You know, it's a tag type in ADA, you derive the tag type in ADA, and you have one hybrid class, if you will, that is usable from both languages, and you can then cross-dispatch. So here, I've got uh, two dispatching calls, one in C++, uh, one in ADA, sorry, you see the, the tick class notation, one in C++. And uh, the call will actually be able to cross dispatch to C++ or ADA, depending on what is the actual type. So now um, that's the, the, the underlying technology. Of course, there's still one step that's missing, which is how to write those bindings. You know, how to make ADA, how to give to ADA access to C++ and vice versa. Um, I'm going to accelerate a bit uh, just to tell you that those bindings can be quite 
tricky to develop. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have done that in the past. I mean, I have, and I've made plenty of mistakes with those. Uh, the compiler can check anything. The linker will check that the symbols are there, but it will not check that the parameters are correct. So it's very easy to get that wrong. That is just a, an easy example that shows both directions. Uh, it, with uh, C++, it, it's even more crazy. With, with C, okay, so that's a, that's a typical error uh, that you could make for parameter representation, for example, if you have a R1, which is a struct, uh, but passed by copy in, uh, in C, then if you're using just a regular type in ADA, ADA will believe that this is passed by reference, although what you really want is passed by copy, so you need to specify it. And that is just the easy C. I, I don't want to show you the C++ binding. It's, it's, it's brutal. The, the mangling itself is incomprehensible. So you really need the tool to help you designing uh, those low-level layers of interface, which you have, thankfully, uh, through the binding generators that we provide. So there's one that goes from C++ to ADA, uh, you can, or from C to ADA, you can call it from GCC or G++ by adding the fdump ADA spec um, flag, and then the, the list of header files that you want to create the uh, spec for, the ADA spec for. And then you can go the other way around from ADA to C. I don't know if we have ADA to C++, but we have ADA to C, which uh, the GNAT CEG name, which will generate a header file that correspond to that ADA specification. You may want to wrap that into some nicer uh, structure, but then you have all the typing available to make sure that they work. But for the low level layers, this is very useful. And of course, uh, one of the issues that you will face once all of that is covered is how do you compile the application? Where do you put the object? How do you link? What are the link options? Do I use the C++ linker, the ADA linker, what have you? Uh, I personally have no idea. So thankfully, I don't need to. Uh, if you just specified in your project file, hey, I'm using those languages. Deal with it. It will do the job for you and, and, and create that binary with all this intelligence that you will never have to figure out. <laughs>